Hey everyone, Forrest here with Rocky Mountain School of Photography, and today we're gonna to talk about the difference between electronic shutter and mechanical shutter. So before we get too far into this, I wanna talk a little bit about where this setting lives and if you have it. So first and foremost, if you have a DSLR, there is a slim chance that you're gonna have the ability to flip between electronic and mechanical shutter. If you have a mirrorless camera though, chances are you will have this option. So what I would do is pull out your camera manual, regardless of what camera you have, and look for an electronic shutter option. Most cameras will arrive from the factory on mechanical shutter, and you're gonna be enabling electronic shutter as an added feature. So what we need to do first is understand the difference between a mechanical shutter and an electronic shutter. Here I have a picture of a sensor. So let's picture this as the sensor at the back of our camera. And in order for the shutter to work, it actually has two what are called curtains. Now what these curtains are for is blocking light from hitting the sensor and together they make up our shutter. Now, what a lot of people think is that these curtains must work from the center. So if you were to have a one second shutter speed, your curtains would open, they would remain open for one second, and then those curtains would close. The problem with that is though, if they start in the middle of the sensor, the middle of the sensor would actually get more light than the edges because it's the first part of the sensor to get exposed to light and it's also the last part of the sensor to get exposed to light. So instead, the curtains move in the same direction. As an example, if we had a one second shutter speed, what would happen is this curtain would open by moving down and then one second later, this curtain would close by moving down. And because they both move in the same direction, the sensor is evenly illuminated. Now in a very fast shutter speed, what'll happen is both curtains will move together, exposing a slit of the sensor to light over time. And that allows you to do very fast things. And that's how these cameras are able to get, you know, 10, 15 frames per second is because that very tiny slit is moving down the sensor and then the sensor, the shutter resets itself and it moves down again. So this is generally referred to as your first curtain and your second curtain, and they control how the sensor sees light. Now, that's a mechanical shutter. Alternatively, we have electronic shutter. And the way electronic shutter works is it's a little bit different. Instead of the entire sensor capturing light, the sensor actually reads light one line at a time. Now I'm saying line, well line I'm referring to one row of pixels. And your sensor has, you know, maybe five, 6,000 rows of pixels, but it's gonna read one row at a time. And what it's gonna do is it's gonna turn on that first row of pixels, read out what color they are. Then it's gonna turn on the second row of pixels, read out what color they are. And when that second row starts getting turned on and counting, the first row closes. And then it reads out the next one, reads out the next one, reads out the next one, out the next one all the way down the entire surface of the sensor. So it's basically turning on the sensor and turning off the sensor one row at a time. Now there are some little variations to this. There's new global sensor technology where the entire sensor can read itself out at one time. But in general, there's no shutter. There's no white piece of paper. This white piece of paper is just here for an example to show you how one row is being read out at a time. There's nothing actually physically blocking the surface of the sensor. And that allows this to work very quickly. We're no longer waiting for a mechanical shutter curtain to move across the surface of the sensor. Instead, it's able to just read it out as quickly as it can read out those values. And obviously, as time goes on and technology gets more advanced, that read speed is increasing, uh, and as different sensors evolve, that's just gonna continue to get better. So now that we've looked at how this mechanically works and we understand the process and the differences between the two, let's talk about pros and cons, and more importantly, when we should be using electronic and when we should be using mechanical shutter. Let's start by talking about the advantages of an electronic shutter. And the first thing I wanna mention is speed. Electronic shutters are able to shoot at much higher shutter speeds than a mechanical shutter can ever achieve. As an example, most mechanical shutters these days are locked at 1 8,000th or 1 4,000th of a second as the fastest possible shutter speed, whereas a lot of electronic shutters can go to 1 32,000th, 1 64,000th, and even faster. Now what that means practically is sometimes at 1 4,000th or 1 8,000th, if we're shooting outside on a bright sunny day and we're using a very fast lens like an f1.4 or f1.2 lens, sometimes even at 1 4,000th or 1 8,000th of a second with our ISO all the way down, we're actually still capturing too much light with our fastest shutter speed. 
And that can be really nice. If we can just switch our camera over to electronic shutter and all of a sudden get a faster shutter speed, it allows us to use those very wide open apertures in very brightly lit environments. Additionally, that fast shutter speed is also able to freeze motion more. So sometimes if you're shooting something incredibly fast moving, even at one eight thousandth of a second, you still might have a bit of motion blur. All of a sudden going to one thirty two thousandth or faster, you're going to be able to stop that motion very easily. Another speed advantage of an electronic shutter is its ability to shoot at a higher frames per second rate. Most mechanical shutters top out at 12 to 15 frames per second, whereas electronic shutters can sometimes hit over 100 frames per second in certain situations. This means if you're shooting sports or action, things like that, you can get those higher frame rates, which is gonna allow you to get more shots of a given action. Another advantage of an electronic shutter is silence. So if you're an event photographer shooting in a very quiet environment, you're gonna be able to take pictures with no moving parts. So your camera is gonna operate completely silently. Now I will also say this is a disadvantage as well. A lot of people that you're photographing are used to hearing that mechanical sound of a shutter and you'll be left in awkward situations trying to say like, no, I got the picture, even though someone didn't hear the shutter click. Finally, the last advantage to me is wear and tear on the camera as well as shake. Because there's no moving parts, you're not gonna be introducing any extra shake into the camera. So things like mirror lockup that we used to do to lock up our mirror and worrying about when the shutter opens and closes, shaking the camera, we don't have to worry about that stuff. So if you're shooting with a very slow shutter speed doing astro or night photography, that mechanical shutter is gonna give you a much less shaken camera. There's gonna be no vibrations going on. It's gonna be a very clean image. All right, now let's get into the disadvantages of electronic shutter. And obviously these disadvantages are also the advantages of mechanical. The first and most important is something called rolling shutter. This is something that videographers have been dealing with for a while, but photographers now, we have to worry about this as well. What rolling shutter is, is because the sensor is read out line by line or row by row, if you're shooting something very fast moving, you can actually get bent lines. If you have some vertical lines in your image, say something's moving quick or the camera is being panned very quickly, the subject will actually move over the course of each line of the sensor being read. And that can create what's called rolling shutter, which basically is just a straight line appearing to be bent. Now, if you wanna test rolling shutter on your camera, it's very easy. You can actually flip it into video mode and say, shoot yourself like a light post or something that's a vertical line and move your camera left and right very quickly. And you'll notice that that nice, perfect vertical line instead becomes a bit bent. Now what's really cool is as stacked sensors, back illuminated sensors, all these cool new sensor technologies start to become mainstream, the speed of readout, the ability for the camera to read out that information very quickly is increasing, which vastly reduces rolling shutter. Another really big issue with electronic shutter is something called banding. These days with most houses, businesses, streets, pretty much everything illuminated with LED lights, we run into this issue quite a bit. LEDs actually turn on and off as a control of brightness, and they do it so quick that our eyes actually can't see it, but our cameras will pick that up. And moreover, because our sensor is read out line by line from top to bottom with an electronic shutter, you're actually gonna get dark and light bands running through your photo horizontally. Now the fix for this is really just to mess with your shutter speed until you find a shutter speed that doesn't get as much banding. However, that can be really hard and especially if you're an event photographer and you're trying to find this magic shutter speed that works and the lights are changing, it really can be quite a challenge. Mechanical shutter can also show banding in certain situations but it's much less likely. So if you're out there shooting and you see bands running through your photo, if you can change the light source, try that. If you can change your shutter speed a little bit, that might help as well, but you might have to switch to mechanical shutter. I think it's also worth mentioning that many cameras have an anti-flicker mode. You can turn that on. That's gonna have the camera basically give its best guess at fixing that flicker and detecting it. And lastly, the final disadvantage of an electronic shutter is your flash sync speed. If you're trying to shoot with a speed light or a strobe in the studio, generally in electronic shutter mode, your sync speed is gonna be a little bit slower than it will be with a mechanical shutter. 
Most modern cameras have a sync speed of faster than 1 1 25th of a second, generally 1 1 25th, 1 200, 1 2 50th with mechanical and with an electronic, it's gonna be maybe a stop or so slower. The only other thing I'll add to this is that some cameras do have a hybrid between electronic and mechanical. Uh, Canon for one uses an electronic front curtain, but a mechanical rear curtain. You'll run into that sometimes. They've been using that since uh, really since live view first came out with the older 40D camera, um, but you'll run into different kind of hybrid technologies as well. But in general, it's a camera setting in your menu that you can turn on electronic or mechanical if you have a newer mirrorless camera. So where does this leave us? How should we set our cameras? Well, it really depends on the person. I personally still prefer mechanical shutter. I really like the sound of my camera clicking. I enjoy that. However, I do know when and where I like to use electronic shutter, which is really two things for me. Number one, if I'm shooting outside on a bright sunny day, I will flip to electronic to allow myself to use those wide open apertures. Secondly, I'll switch to electronic if I'm doing night photography and I wanna limit any sort of shake induced into the camera. However, if you're an event photographer and you commonly shoot in very quietly lit situations, I would be leaving electronic on most of the time. However, I'd be keeping a keen eye out for things like banding and flicker. Everyone, I hope you found this video useful. If you did, definitely drop a like down below, hit subscribe to stay up to date with future videos. And if you have a question or hey, maybe another advantage or disadvantage to electronic or mechanical shutter, leave it down in the comment section down below. I will see you in a future video. Thanks for watching.